Hey guys, Lady Lee here from LadyLee'sHome.com and in this video I want to talk to you about Muscovy ducks. Um, these ducks are really special to me. I've been raising them for a few years and I have two, um, just a disclaimer here, I've never actually raised any other kind of duck because I kind of came about them by accident and fell in love and never really felt the desire or the need to try another kind of duck. Um, they're great egg layers, they're great meat birds, they're great just to have as pets even. Um, and we'll talk about all those things later, but um, one thing that I've learned through this homesteading journey is that it can really be simplified if you take the time to choose the right animals, the right breeds of animals, and um, the right methods. So there are methods of gardening that will be easier than others. Um, there's a certain way to set your garden that will be easier for you to maintain than another um, setup. There are breeds of animals, like for example, I chose La Mancha goats because I only need to raise two goats for all of our milk, um, all the milk that I can consume and, um, and, uh, and process, you know? So, um, Muscovy ducks really, really fall into that category of simple, simple um, breed that is easy to keep and kind of um, covers all of the homesteader needs, I think, in a pretty, pretty, pretty good way. We moved out of the city in 2016 and bought this uh, country property. Um, the first thing that we wanted to do is just get all the animals, you know, it's things that animals that you can't keep in the city. When we lived in, in the city, we had some chickens, but we really wanted to try to keep other animals like goats and, you know, have milk and other kinds of eggs and maybe raise some of our meat. Um, my ex-husband got three ducks, two females and one male, from our friends and these are the kind of ducks that they had, the Muscovies. I've never done any research about them and never really considered Muscovy ducks before. We brought them here to this new homestead and um, in one season from those three we reached 50 ducks and that's one thing that happened that suddenly I saw how much meat we can produce and how many eggs we can get. Um, and I was kind of amazed, but uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. The things that amazed me most about them is that I, we have, and I'll show you in a minute, we have an old or not an old, but like a really shallow pond right next to the house here. It only fills up from rainwater and we do have dry times here in North Carolina. So what happens is that this pond is really becoming a swamp a lot of uh, a lot of weeks out of the summer, especially. And when we first moved here, it was impossible to sit outside. Um, I'm a very outdoors person and I've, I love to just sit outside and drink my coffee in the morning or you know in the evening just to take a couple of minutes and just soak up the, the energy of nature. I was not able to sit outside for one second because of the flies and the mosquitoes. We've got a lot of livestock around here and the pond or the old swamp, um, swamp pond kind of thing. Uh, was just a really good breeding ground for mosquitoes. Um, the cows and the other livestock bring in all the flies and it was just so hard to sit outside. Um, I wasn't really sure what to do and then we got these ducks and what I noticed is that within three months it completely changed. Everything completely changed. They were free range, they had access to the pond, and suddenly the flies and the mosquitoes were gone in the middle of the summer, which was kind of unusual. And I tried to understand why it happened, and finally it clicked to me that it was because of the ducks. Um, I've always had them free range since then, just a few of them, because they will eat the garden and my garden is not uh, fenced. So they'll eat greens like lettuce and stuff like that. Um, but still, I am willing to take that if I have just one or two or three of them free range. Um, 
and they just clean up everything. They clean up the bugs, they clean up the ticks, they clean up the mosquitoes, they clean up the, the flies. And this is really the best thing that I love about them. A little bit of history. Um, Muscovy ducks are native to South America. They were called, I think you say it, Moscow or something like that because how many mosquitoes they eat. Um, and all these things I kind of learned later when I started researching about them, but they're pretty fascinating. They are wild and they are native to South America. The Russian Mus Muscovites, I hope I say it right, um, imported them into Russia to raise domestically and that's where they got the name Muscovies. Um, they are actually the only duck that is not derived of the mallard duck which actually makes them not a duck. They are a waterfall, basically, a large waterfall. Um, they don't quack like most ducks, they hiss, and they still keep their wild nature. I think that's another thing that I really like about them. They're very wild, they're great foragers, they know how to find their food, they know how to take care of themselves, but they're very friendly and they are, kind of domestic but not really domestic they'll stay close to you um, they love to eat so as long as you feed them a couple of times a day or once a day even i don't feed them too much because i do want them to um, go and forage and get all the bugs and everything but as long as you keep them um, fed once a day just give them a little bit of food they'll stay really close and they're very friendly aside from the mothers when they have little babies um, they are kind of a mix, you know, a mix of a wild animal and a domestic animal and it works really well because they can take care of themselves pretty good, which means you have less work to do. Muscovy ducks are famous for the red mask that they have around their eyes. Um, it's kind of a warty mask and they develop that around four to five months of age. Um, the male has much more red on his face than the female. The male is also bigger than the female. So male can reach about 15 pound and a female about nine. They are not the great, um, uh, they're not the greatest at flying. Since the male is so heavy, um, you rarely see them fly. And if they fly, they fly really, really low. The female is a little bit better when it comes to flying. And um, yes, you can find them on the roof of your house. Um, it's easier for them to move around. They don't fly away though. They, they stay close and they don't fly that much. You know, you might see them circling around um, once a week or whatever, um, or if they're far in the field and they want to get to the pond, then they'll fly to the pond. But they usually just waddle around, walking around, looking for food, snatching flies from the air. It's pretty fascinating to see that. Um, they have a variety of colors. They can be gray and white and black and brown and a mix of all of those. Um, what else? They are, they're very pretty and um, they grow pretty, pretty fast. So when a female starts laying or when, when they hatch, we'll talk about laying in a minute, but when they hatch, um, they reach full size in about three to four months, which makes them a really good animal for meat production because you can butcher them in about that time, about three to four months, where um, if you go with um, meat bird, like a meat chicken, yes, it will be eight weeks, but you know, me in the past, I tried to get the Cornish cross, to raise the Cornish cross and they just don't behave like chickens and it feels not right for me. So then I tried to do heritage breed of chickens, but these reach the big mature size, butchering size in seven to eight to nine months. Um, the ducks are half that time. Their meat is delicious. It's dark. It's 98% fat free. Um, it's very flavorful and pretty simple to cook. On the blog, there is a post on how to butcher Muscovy ducks. And um, I, I show you step by step how to do that. But they're pretty good for egg production because they grow pretty quickly. Um, you'll see at the beginning and um, you'll see at the beginning that their feathers are starting to come in and 
in about four weeks they're kind of like teenagers and look a little bit weird but um, they get all their colorful feathers in about three months and they're really beautiful. Muscovy ducks will eat chicken food um, so whatever chicken laying pellets that you get at the store you can feed these this to the ducks as well. Um, they love uh, kitchen scraps, all kind of vegetables and leftovers and pasta and leftover bread. Um, and they really eat, they, they eat a lot. They love to eat and they're pretty big ducks. So as much as you give them, they'll eat. Um, if you do the grain from the store, I try not to give them too much, especially if your ducks are free range, which is the best thing for them. They can find food all year round. Um, I feed a little bit more during the winter, but not much, much more. Um, they're great foragers. They eat, you know, worms and, and bugs and ticks and um, the mosquitoes and the flies. And I really want to keep them active and searching for food. So I don't feed them too much. Um, I do try to feed them once a day at the same time when I do my morning chores and just to make sure that they stay around. Um, I can get a head count if, if that's something you do. Um, since they're not very good um, at flying, they are easy prey. So I have Shayla. Where's Shayla? Shayla's over there. Um, my dog and she kind of keeps everybody protected here and all the coyotes and everything away. Um, and you know, a farmer need a, needs a dog. If you don't have a dog, um, just take into consideration because, that because they're big and because they don't fly very well, they are easy prey. So if they free range, um, that can be an issue. Uh, I, so I do keep them, um, keep them fed once a day and I just throw the food or on the ground um, and let them pick it up and eat it. They usually go and walk around and um, they'll come back whenever they see me. You know, they're staying close. So once they see me out, they'll just come running. Uh, they're really funny. They can just follow you like um, pets, you know, like a dog, uh, just because they really love to eat. So it's up to you. You can feed them just as you would feed a chicken that is in a fence. But if they are not in a fence, I try to keep the feed um, a little bit on a low, Side because I do want them to keep forage and clean up and eat all the bugs and everything. If you do keep them in a fence, then they need to be fed just like chickens. And there is a post on the blog about everything that we're talking right now and it's all broken down. So if you need quantities and stuff like that, you can check out this post. As far as water, of course, they need a water source. And just like any other duck, they make a mess of their water. So it works really well if you can let them free range and if you have a pond that they can leave around. Um, I have one pond, pond this way and another that way and they constantly walk between them. The ones that I keep in the fence, um, I do need to make sure that they have a big tub of water. They don't need to be swimming or able to swim um, as long as they can get inside and kind of wash themselves and dunk their head in the water and, you know, enjoy the water this way. It's enough for them. Um, I do need to change this water every day because they do go inside of the tubs and just make a mess out of things. So, but that's one thing that you got to do with, I think, any kind of duck. Um, ducks are known to be pretty messy. So Muscovies are no, no different in this regard. Let's talk about shelter. So they really don't care about shelter. As long as they are adults and as far as they only need shelter really to make their nests and to sit on their nests. Other than that, they don't care about the cold. They don't care about rain. Um, they'll stay outside all the time. You don't need to have a roosting bars for them or anything like that. Um, they're very easy in this regard. When they do uh, lay their eggs, they are usually looking for a protected place somewhere that is a little, a little um, 
protected of the elements or they usually go under something. So the ones that are free range, they'll go in the feed room, for example, and um, just find a spot by the hay or something like that and make their nest. Sometimes they go in the dog house and make their nest over there. The ones that are in a fence, um, they will go in the chicken house and one of the nesting boxes or under the goat bench or something like that and they'll make their nest. I find that they prefer to make their nests on the ground. Um, I read um, in some places that they, um, some people saw that their ducks roost, but even with the ducks that are free range, I have never noticed them on a tree uh, roosting at night. They will just go, um, you know, wherever and just spend the night. Um, if they have little babies or if they are sitting on a nest, then they'll spend it to spend the night there. Other than that, they'll stay by the pond um, or, you know, they'll stay in the feed room under the milk stand or something like that. You really don't have to have anything special for them. I was going to show you how um, Muscovy ducks makes their nest on the ground. And when we pulled up the tarp, there was this huge rat snake um, over there fisting on an egg. So that's one thing to take into consideration, guys. If your duck's free range and they make their nests on the ground, especially in early spring uh, when snakes wake up and they are hungry, you might lose some eggs to a snake. So just make sure you uh, be careful when you check on your nests. As far as egg laying, they don't lay eggs year round. Um, they will lay about 80 to 120 eggs a year and they usually here in the south where uh, the weather is a little warmer they lay they start laying about March and uh, finish laying about um, October or beginning of, of November um, and it comes out to be about a hundred and eighty to 120 eggs um, a year uh, their eggs are not super large, but they are larger than a chicken egg. Um, they are wonderful, wonderful eggs to eat. And the yolk is pretty much taking most of the room in the egg. So not a lot of egg whites. If you bake a lot, um, this richness adds a lot of goodness to baked goods. So they're wonderful eggs to bake with. Um, if you don't want babies, you can pretty much collect the eggs like you would with chicken eggs. If you do want ducklings, then you just let the female be and she will build a nest. She'll find a protected place and she'll start building her nest. When the nest is about 12 to 17 eggs, um, she starts sitting on them and they do it differently than chickens if you ever had chickens you know that chickens go into that brooding zone and they kind of disconnect from the rest of the world and just sit there for 28 days with muscovy's duck ducks it's it's different um, they sit on the nest for 35 days however they will get up they'll go wash themselves in the pond they will get up to eat and every time they get up they will uh, pluck some of their breast feathers and cover the eggs um, so the eggs stay warm and they can be out and about for 30 minutes to an hour or whatever and then they'll come back to sit on the nest after 35 days um, they the eggs will hatch and you get these cute yellow baby ducklings that are so adorable um, do be aware that the female is pretty aggressive when she has little babies. Um, they are wonderful, wonderful mothers. They'll take care of their young. You pretty much don't need to do anything. Um, my kids a lot of times want to play with the ducklings and everything and they do have to make sure that they pay attention to the mothers because she will attack. It's never too bad, they just peck, but they will protect their young um, and you know can be aggressive when they have little babies the little babies will follow their mother around and just learn how to swim they go in swimming pretty pretty quickly if you have them fenced you have to make sure that you have a very very shallow um, dish that they can easily get out of or they will drown so that's one thing to pay attention to they grow pretty quickly and they start eating you know they'll see if if you 
take them to a brooder or if you if you separate them for the mother for some reason if you uh, raise them inside in a brooder if they are in the chicken area you might want to make sure that you feed them some uh, chick starter food other than that i don't actually because the babies are usually free range with the mother and they she teaches them to eat all kind of stuff and they don't need the chick food i will i i do notice that around two weeks or so they will start eating the chicken the pellet the pelleted food the chicken pellets um, and they have no problems with it about four four or five weeks, they pretty much independent and don't need their mother anymore. And then she will go and start on the next nest. So that's how we pretty much got from two females to like almost 60 ducklings or 60 ducks in one season. You can hatch a lot of ducklings in a season. And the wonderful thing for me is that you don't have to do anything. You don't have to put the eggs in an uh, incubator, you don't have to take care of the little babies, you really don't have to do anything. As long as you let the mama be with them and as long as you leave her to be, she will do everything on her own, which is pretty amazing. Um, I either use them for meat or I sell the ducklings, that's the two things that I do. I usually keep around, um, around 10 ducks that's all I really need, um, and it's more than I really need, but the sale of the um, ducklings pretty much cover their feed. So, you know, combined with the fact that they're such good foragers, it pretty much covers everything um, that I need to keep them. So, uh, what else? Let's see, they're very friendly. Um, again, aside from when the mother has little young babies, they're pretty friendly ducks. They live really well with other animals. You can see in the in the fence behind me, they live here with the chickens and with the goats. And it's actually the chickens that are pretty mean. So you have to pay attention to that because chicken, the rooster can be really mean to them. Um, and if that's the case, then you have to separate. If you have a good mix of well-behaved um, roosters, and other animals, they can live with cows, they can live around bees and make sure to clean uh, uh, under the beehives so the bees don't suffer from all kind of like crawlers and, and other things. Um, they are very friendly to each other. I usually keep about one drake or one male duck to every four or five female ducks and that seems to be enough. They don't fight a lot between them. Um, although, you know, just with any other kind of uh, bird, you kind of have to keep, keep an eye on it. Um, I have one male now that is getting a little aggressive for some reason in the past couple of weeks. So I'm just going to take the other male and move him outside to just roam around for a little bit. And then during the winter, when I don't have my garden growing, I let all of them out. Um, so I kind of play with it. Sometimes they spend time in the fence and sometimes they are out. Um, I always have a couple of them out just walking around and the babies are out until I sell them or butcher them. Um, and then there's a few in the fence. So I hope this was helpful. I hope I covered um, mostly everything. Any questions that you have, just leave me a comment below and I'll be happy to answer. Um, I really hope that you'll give them a try. They are wonderful, wonderful creatures and they're a lot of fun to raise. They are so easy. I'm a single mom and I travel a lot too. So it's so easy for me because I just let them free range and I can go. I can leave for two and three weeks and when I come back, they're still here, you know? So really easy for me, really simple duck to keep. And um, again, if you have any questions, just ask and I'll try to do my best to answer. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again in the next one. Please subscribe and like and share. See you again in the next one.